There are a lot of email services out there, but Gmail and ProtonMail are two of the biggest names. With Gmail, you get big storage, smart features, and it syncs beautifully with your phone and all your other Google stuff. Then there's ProtonMail, which is entirely built for people who care deeply about their privacy. No tracking, no ads, and encryption from the moment you hit send. So which one actually fits better into your daily routine? How you interact with your email every day is important, so let's look at the interface first. When you open Gmail, as you can see on the screen, it's a classic three-pane view. On the far left, you have your main navigation bar with your inbox, sent mail, drafts, and more. Below that, Gmail integrates its other communication tools, Google Chat and Google Meet, which you can show or hide in the settings. The center pane is your email list, which prominently features sender avatars or initials. Then, on the far right, there's a collapsible side panel. This is where you can access other Google apps like Calendar, Keep for Notes, and Tasks without ever leaving your inbox. The interface is intentionally busy because Gmail is designed to be a central productivity hub, which keeps you deeply embedded within the Google ecosystem for as long as possible. Now, switching over to ProtonMail, the interface is clean, minimalist, and intentionally sparse. The main view is simplified, with a left sidebar for your folders and labels and the central pane for your emails. At the right, you can open up your contacts, Proton Calendar, Security Center, and even Proton VPN without leaving your inbox. The entire design philosophy is to provide a focused, distraction-free environment for one thing, email. This design choice is just as deliberate as Gmail's. The sparse interface isn't a lack of features. It's a feature in itself designed to reduce digital clutter and minimize the potential security risks that come with numerous third-party connections. Beyond the initial look and feel, how these services help you manage the daily flood of emails reveals their fundamental differences. Gmail's approach is built on a massive scale. By default, it uses a tabbed inbox that automatically sorts your mail into categories like primary, promotions, and social, using Google's algorithms to decide what's important. You can also enable Priority Inbox, which further divides your mail into sections like Important and Unread and Starred, learning from your behavior over time to get smarter. The biggest advantage, of course, is the storage. Gmail's free plan offers 15 gigabytes storage. However, it's important to remember that this storage is shared across your entire Google account, including Google Drive and Google Photos, so it can fill up much faster than you might think. On the other hand, while Gmail automates, Proton requires you to build your own system using a combination of folders and labels. The free plan limits you to just three folders and three labels. You have the standard conversation view, which groups email threads together, and you can easily snooze emails to have them reappear later, just like in Gmail. A feature we find particularly useful is the built-in tracking protection. Proton automatically blocks spy pixels hidden in marketing emails, so you can read your messages without advertisers knowing you've opened them. Let us show you this newsletters view. It's a dedicated space that gathers all your subscriptions, which makes it incredibly easy to see what you're signed up for and unsubscribe with a single click. Now let's move on to the actual email composition window. With Gmail, you get all the standard formatting options and can attach files up to 25 megabytes. If a file is larger, Gmail handily converts it into a Google Drive link automatically. But where Gmail adds value is with its productivity features. As you can see here, you have Schedule Send, which lets you write an email now and have it delivered at a later time, and Snooze, which temporarily removes an email from your inbox until you're ready to deal with it. There's also Confidential Mode. This allows you to set an expiration date on an email or revoke access to it later. It also prevents the recipient from forwarding, copying, or downloading the message. However, we have to be honest here. This is not end-to-end -end encryption. Google can still access and read the content of these emails. ProtonMail offers similar standard formatting tools 
and the same 25 megabyte attachment limit, though without the automatic conversion to a cloud link. Let us show you the standout feature, password protected emails. This allows you to send a fully encrypted message to someone who doesn't use ProtonMail. The recipient gets an email with a link. To view the message, they must click the link and enter a password that you've shared with them separately. The message is decrypted in their browser, which ensures it remains private. Another powerful tool is the ability to send self-destructing emails. You can set an expiration timer, say for one day or one week, after which the email is permanently deleted from the recipient's inbox, giving you ultimate control over your information. Continuing with organization, the way Gmail and ProtonMail structure your saved emails is fundamentally different. Gmail famously does away with traditional folders. Instead, it uses a highly flexible system of labels. Think of labels as tags. As we're demonstrating, you can apply multiple labels to a single email. For example, a message can be labeled work, project, and urgent, all at the same time, without creating duplicate copies. This allows for a very fluid, non-hierarchical way of organizing your inbox. When you archive an email in Gmail, you're simply removing the inbox label, but it remains fully accessible under all mail or by searching for its other labels. ProtonMail, in contrast, uses a hybrid system that might feel more familiar to users of older email clients like Outlook. It has both folders and labels. The key difference is that a message can only exist in one folder at a time. If you move an email from your inbox to a receipts folder, it is no longer in the inbox. However, once inside that folder, you can apply multiple labels to it for further categorization. But, and this is a point we have to keep stressing because it's so important for free users, you are limited to only three folders and three labels. If you think in cross-referenced categories, Gmail's label system is powerful. If you prefer a rigid, hierarchical file system, Proton's folder-based approach might feel more intuitive. This brings us to the most important category in this comparison, security and privacy. These two terms are often used interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. Gmail uses Transport Layer Security, or TLS, which encrypts your email as it travels from your computer to Google's servers. Once it arrives, the email is stored with strong encryption. However, Google holds the encryption keys. This means Google has the technical ability to unlock and read your emails. They do this to power features like Smart Compose, to filter spam, and to gather data for targeted advertising. Because Google is a US company, it is also subject to American laws like the Cloud Act, which means it can be compelled to turn over your email data to law enforcement. So while Gmail is secure from outside hackers, it is not private from Google itself. ProtonMail is designed for both security and privacy. It's based in Switzerland, which has some of the strictest data privacy laws in the world, putting it outside of US and EU jurisdiction. Like Gmail, it uses TLS for emails in transit. But its core privacy comes from two other technologies. First is end-to-end -end encryption. When a Proton user sends an email to another Proton user, the message is encrypted on the sender's device and can only be decrypted by the recipient. Proton itself cannot read the message. Second is zero access encryption. This means that all the emails stored in your inbox are encrypted with a key derived from your password. Only you hold this key, so Proton cannot access your stored mail. This is why if you lose your password and your recovery methods, your data is gone forever. Following that, let's talk about their writing assistance. Gmail includes its Smart Compose feature for all users, including those on the free plan. As you type, it suggests words or entire phrases in grayed out text, which you can accept by hitting the tab key. This is powered by Google's advanced machine learning, which has analyzed billions of emails and, if you allow it, learns from your personal writing style to provide tailored suggestions. It can be a real time saver. But this convenience comes at a privacy cost. 
The feature is only possible because Google's AI is constantly reading and analyzing email content on a massive scale. Now, Proton has its own AI writing assistant called Proton Scribe. It's designed with a privacy-first approach, with options to run the AI model locally on your own computer so your data never leaves your device. However, Proton Scribe is not available on the free plan. It is a paid add-on or is included in higher tier subscriptions. Another area where privacy has a direct impact on functionality is search. Gmail search is, as you would expect from Google, incredibly powerful. It's fast, comprehensive, and searches the full text of every email and many types of attachments in your entire account history. It also supports advanced search operators, which allow you to create highly specific queries to find exactly what you're looking for. It is, for all intents and purposes, Google search for your inbox. ProtonMail's search is where you feel the technical trade-off of its privacy model most acutely. Because your emails are protected with zero access encryption on their servers, Proton cannot search their contents directly. The web app creates a local search index which means it downloads and indexes your emails within your browser on your computer. This allows you to search the content of your emails privately, but it can be slower than Gmail's server-side search and only works on the device where the index has been created. Furthermore, when it comes to filtering, Gmail allows you to create an unlimited number of powerful filters to automatically organize your inbox. ProtonMail's filtering system is also robust, but the free plan is limited to one single active filter. This is another one of those major restrictions that makes managing a high volume of email on the free plan very difficult. As for customization, Gmail is highly customizable. You can change your theme with custom colors and background images, adjust the information density, set up a reading pane, and even create your own keyboard shortcuts. But its real superpower is integration. It easily connects with the entire Google ecosystem, Calendar, Drive, Keep, and so on. Beyond that, the Google Workspace Marketplace opens up a world of third-party add-ons from companies like Trello, Asana, and Zoom, which can live right inside your Gmail sidebar. In ProtonMail, customization is more limited. You can choose between a few themes and layouts, but the options are far fewer than Gmail's. It intentionally restricts third-party integrations to maintain its tight security. Instead, it integrates with its own suite of privacy-focused products, Proton Calendar, Proton Drive, Proton VPN, and Proton Pass. Free users get access to the free and also limited versions of these services. So the choice isn't just about an email client, it's about the digital ecosystem you want to inhabit. Finally, Let's talk about accessing your email outside of a browser tab. For Gmail, the answer is simple. There is no official native Gmail desktop app for Windows or Mac OS. The most common workaround is to use a feature in browsers like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge to install site as an app. This creates a desktop shortcut that opens Gmail in its own dedicated window without the browser toolbars. While this provides an app-like experience, it's important to understand that it's just a glorified browser window, not a native application. ProtonMail, on the other hand, does have official native desktop apps for Windows, Mac OS, and even a beta for Linux. These apps provide a focused, distraction-free experience with native operating system notifications. But the desktop app is a premium feature. So, Gmail doesn't have one at all, and Proton puts its app behind a paywall. So, after all that, let's boil it down. The choice is clear. If you need massive storage, powerful search, and easy integration with other apps, stick with Gmail. But if your top priority is security, ProtonMail is the undeniable winner. Choose the one that aligns with your values. Let us know your pick in the comments. Thanks for watching.